Hi everybody, this is Gatsad. A few minutes ago, I retweeted a tweet from Jonathan Kay of uh, Quillette magazine, where he was identifying arguably the most woke email signature available anywhere today. And so first I will read you the, um, the woke signature in question, and then I will read a whole passage from the parasitic mind that speaks to uh, this issue. So first, let me read you the uh, tweet. I am a white settler scholar who was born, raised, and had lived my entire life to this point on the Haldeman tract in what is now called Southern Ontario, working at the University of Alberta and living in the city of Edmonton today. I am a visitor on Treaty 6 territory in, and some symbols that I can't read, but I guess phonetically they spell Awisk. Wasi Waskahikan, and the homeland of the Metis nation. I acknowledge and understand that until indigenous peoples living in these territories and across Turtle Island regain their sovereignty and self-government, and that until restitution is paid and truth is unambiguously communicated, that we are all participating in and benefiting from colonial violence. If you walk around, if you exist, you are engaging in colonial violence. <clears throat> so now I'm going to read you from the bottom of page 57 and then page 58 of the parasitic mind, specifically regarding land acknowledgements, very much like those that I just read in that email signature. There are several ways by which the indigenization of academia is taking place. Indigenous land acknowledgement statements are often made at the start of formal academic events, such as graduation ceremonies, wherein speakers start off by acknowledging that the attendees are on hallowed grounds whose provenance belongs to indigenous people. A more forceful version of this new ritual is to proclaim that the attendees are trespassing on stolen lands. In fall 2017, I delivered an invited lecture at the University of Regina titled, quote, Death of the West by a Thousand cuts, forces that impede the free and rational exchange of ideas, close quote. The introducer began by reminding the audience of Treaty 6, signed between the Canadian Crown and various indigenous peoples in 1876, and added that we were on the lands of the Métis. At university convocations, masters of ceremony will often start off by making such land acknowledgments. Put yourself in the shoes of of the thousands of graduating students who must sit silently while having the cloak of historical guilt placed on their shoulders. They have worked hard for many years to arrive at this point. This is their moment. It is their time in the spotlight. And yet they are catapulted into historical grievances that have nothing to do with any of them. The reality is that innumerable existing lands have belonged to someone else at some point. This is a defining feature of history. It is an indelible part of Homo sapiens. Should we adopt a global standard wherein any and all ceremonies must begin with a forensic historical accounting of all peoples who laid claim to a given land? If so, Jews should insist that all future events that take place in Saudi Arabia start off by recognizing the historical rights of the Banu Nadir, the Banu Kainuka and the Banu Kraiza, Jewish tribes that existed in the region prior to the ascent of Islam. It is not good what is taking place in the desperate attempt to appear empathetic and introspective. What the West is doing is basically engaging in pathological self-loathing. Every single culture that you could think of, every peoples that you could think of has had historical grievances that they that defined their identity. It is an indelible part, as I explained in the parasitic mind, of human history. But what makes us strong, whether it be at the individual level or at the collective level, is that we are defined by our ability to overcome our victimhood right i come from lebanon i've experienced horrible things growing up in lebanon it is part of my personal history 
I discuss it wherever it's appropriate to do so, but it doesn't define me. Actually, I'm more defined by the fact that I've overcome that background to be who I am today. That's my personhood. And strong peoples are exactly the same way. Jews were almost exterminated just a couple of generations ago, and yet they're still around. Armenians, my wife is Lebanese Armenian. Her ancestors escaped a genocide and came to Lebanon. And then her parents, my in-laws, had to escape Lebanon and came, started in Canada. Of course, my own extended ancestry is also one where we've had to move from here to there. Some of my uh, grandparents come originally from Syria and they came to Lebanon. So there are all sorts of tragic stories. Not 400 years ago. It's within my lifetime. The nightmares that I have experienced for 25 years after le leaving Lebanon is part of my history. It's not intergenerational trauma. It is part of what I lived through. It's in my brain. And yet I've overcome that horrible background. It is part of me, but I'm defined by the fact that I've defeated my victimhood strategy or narrative. When you have a people that defines themselves by them having to be perpetual victims, it is an existential dead end. Because what you're saying is, there is no way for you to escape the existential jail that we're putting you in. Forevermore, you shall be a victim. We see the same thing with the Palestinian people. They're the only people <coughs> excuse me, who have maintained the refugee status that they have for as long as they have. Again, Jews were almost entirely exterminated. Hitler had almost succeeded in Europe. They were coming next to the Middle East to get rid of those other pesky Mizrahi Jews. But yet, here we are. So we don't have to look back to the Treaty of 1876 with the Métis people to look for a dreadful, dark story. We can look for a story within our lifetimes where peoples were wholesale exterminated. And yet they don't wallow in victimhood. It's part of their history. They recognize it. They mark the moment. They know it's part of what defines them as a people, but they overcome it. There is nothing good that comes from doing this pathological self-loathing. We acknowledge that we are colonial rapists and so on. It's not good for the people who do it. It's not good for the people that you're trying to supposedly assuage. It's not good for the helpless innocent students who are sitting there trying to get their degrees and yet they are being drained and washed you know in in culpability that they have nothing to do with it's a terrible idea you know it, it's just it's it truly you know you really wonder whether there will be a day where historians will look back and say my goodness how could this have happened how could we have allowed these parasitic ideas to flourish with such alacrity, with such aplomb, with such, you know, uh, you know, unhindered. And again, tons of people write to me and say, oh my God, I can't take it. I, I want to leave academia. I cannot take it anymore. I want to get out. This is all of our doing. Nobody is saying that we don't recognize that there have been historical things that have been, that are, that have been done incorrectly in the past. But now it becomes part of everything that we do, every email, every email signature, every graduate, and it comes out of nowhere. We've dealt with those issues for hundreds of years. N nobody is, is, is being flippant about it. It's kind of like when, when all the, the anti-racism, the, the candies of the world say, but you know, we just want to teach that, you know, slavery took place in the United States. Oh, geez, until Kendi came along, we had no idea that slavery had happened in the U.S. Thank you, Dr. Kendi, for putting slavery on the forefront of our minds because we didn't know about it. 
You know, there is no guy called Martin Luther King who ever existed before you who dealt with these issues. You know, there is no guy called Frederick Douglass. We didn't know there was slavery in the U.S. until you came along. So the narrative is so false. Look, the West is the most tolerant, truly progressive, not progressive in the fascist sense of the term today. It is such an anomalous society, what we have created in the West. The world is defined by brutality, by autocratic rule, by dictatorial rule, by lack of freedoms, by lack of individual dignity. And here comes along the West with a set of foundational values that are so anomalous that we were able to maximize the flourishing of so many people in such a short period of time. And then these parasitic ideas, all of which were spawned on university campuses, come along 40, 50 years ago and set us back so that we quickly head back to all of those societies that are the default value of humanity. Tribalism, collectivism, lack of individual dignity, all of the bad ideas that are the central defining features of all societies around the world throughout all of recorded history is what we are trying to replicate. Because we said, you know, we don't like this idea of having freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, individual dignity, that scientific method. We don't want that. Let's institute postmodernism, cultural relativism, militant feminism, rejection of reality, rejection of common sense, you know, science is only one way of knowing. Whiteness is a bad construct. And on and on and on. It's unbelievable. It's soul crushing. The reason why I wrote The Parasitic Mind and the reason why I documented all that was happening for the nearly 30 years that I've been a professor and that I covered in The Parasitic Mind is because I remain, even yours truly, who wrote The Parasitic Mind, I remain baffled, bewildered by what we're seeing. It's simply unbelievable. Forgive me for the rant, but it's just, you know, I truly wonder, will it be in our lifetime that the ship will be redressed? When I put on my optimist hat, I say, oh yes, you know, the silent majority will wake up. And as I said on Tucker Carlson, if the silent majority activates their inner honey badger, uh, we will get rid of the problems by next Tuesday. If not, it'll be a slow train ride to hell. And I still stand by that. I am optimistic. I truly think that, you know, it takes very little for people to stand up, find their vertebrate, that they are vertebrate species, grow a pair and speak out and say, look, I'm all for acknowledging historical wrongs, but I don't need to have at my son or daughter's uh, graduating ceremony when I paid all this tuition have all this land acknowledgement nonsense where we're having a forensic accounting of what, who did what badly to whom. No, that has been taken care of. And if it needs to be taken care of more, it doesn't need to seep its way into every interaction, and every dynamic so that we are all collectively guilty. Am I guilty for what happened to the Iroquois and to the Algonquin? Am I guilty for that? It happened in the 17th and 18th century in Quebec. I was in Lebanon, my ancestors. Am I also part of the colonial violence? I mean, it's unbelievable. Anyways, you have an opportunity to speak out. You have an opportunity to stop funding universities that do not adhere to central values that define Western freedoms. There are all sorts of things that you can do. I keep repeating it over and over for many years now. You have the power to affect change. On that note, if you appreciate what I do, uh, please go to, at the bottom of the description, below the, 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 the clip that you're watching, even if you're seeing this on, on or you're listening to this on the audio podcast, below my YouTube channel, every clip, there is a icon uh, that has a heart and a thanks. And so you could press that and immediately donate. It could be anything, $2, $5, $10, $50. It serves as an important insurance policy. It's not easy to be where I am every day and speak out the way that I do. Remember what most of you are afraid to say. You're afraid to put one syllable out of place on a tweet, or you're afraid to roll your eyes somewhere lest someone might find out and then fire you. 
Now imagine being in academia the way that I am and speak out the way that I do. So if you support my work, if you appreciate what I do, then please consider supporting it in concrete way. Have a good evening, everybody. Cheers.